There is bouncers at the headquarters have been discharged. They were like, it's still a bit 20 of them. They have to 20. The bouncers are have been evacuated from the national headquarters of Labour Party. What do you want? Abu Rehmuk has heard the information and that you know what to do. Now, so it be uh, obedient. You better focus on that case as you are focusing on it. What they are going to do in the coming days? In fact, somebody... Uh, somebody said that uh, if there's any time for Labour Party uh, to go and uh, see the past question, you know those past question yeah, on uh, how APC tried to hijack a political party and they fought back and they got their party back. But by the time they got their party back, uh, it's like starting all over again. They have destroyed enough that uh, they have damaged enough. Sure you get. But eventually they got their party back. This uh, barista, uh, Inibe, Abi Inibe, I can't remember how to pronounce his name again. Very lovely guy. You know, he said, if uh, Labour Party want to survive APC with what they're about to do, they don't know how much damages they have done already. Or nobody have a clue yet. Okay? With the level of money that they are already pumping, with the level of poverty in Nigeria, or more, a lot of people, they will do that job. All they have to do is to see their ex codes and sign and sign some form and sign some papers. And that's all they need to, to fight uh, and take over Labour Party. Sure, you get now. So, my own advice, anyway. Uh, what do you call it? Let's 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 take uh, a quick a short break. During the elections, Nigeria is now even more divided and more corroded than we thought. This places a deep onus on any administration following the current one to urgently facilitate the process of national moral rearmament and national reconciliation that the potential to enhance healing for aggrieved and bereaved persons across Nigeria and to assuage the youth. This must be done in sync with the imperative of national value reorientation that Nigeria requires to build a collective sense of enduring and noble values and national belonging. During the election Anyway, that's what Bassanjo talking about uh, how Nigeria is so divided and it's never been so divided. A lot of them are saying, oh, Nigeria is so divided, Nigeria is divided, and all of that. But again, they are just all talk, no action. So if uh, Labour Party needs any past question on, uh, you know, how to fight APC uh, from taking over your party, or, uh, yeah, you should speak to Shoure, you know. It's just I don't think uh, Shore would likely uh, would likely want to share that uh, with the level of uh, toxicity that uh, we are all seeing these days. Even Shore joined those who are like uh, trying to drag uh, who are dragging OB and every obedient uh, is part of those dragging them anywhere. And you know when he leaves, others will follow. So I don't know what to ask because what APC go do with this Labour Party move they are on? Eh? It will even shock the devil beyond their description. You can take that from me. APC have been reacting from money to that uh, letter, open letter that uh, Chimamanda, Shiv Chimamanda Adichie 
sent to Joe Biden. So they're now talking about how dare she, how could she be writing the president uh, of a foreign country, right? To, re to hold back his validation of another president, excuse me, another president elect of another country. Uh, how could she be so like unpatriotic? Or more? It be like say after they did their WhatsApp meeting, that was when they decided to come public. Buy your no no ga for for food car your day. Uh, the other one for to book yamo. Uh, Delia La Corrie and the rest of them, they have been fuming and fuming. And they said Joe Biden should not listen to him. But remember that they said, Well, who cares if Joe Biden congratulates him or not? We don't give a damn about uh, whether he congratulates, congratulates him or not. Sinumbu is the president elect, and that's it. Whether they want it or not, it's going to be sworn in. Here you get. So, forgetting that they were actually those. Who once said it's been taking too long for Joe Biden? He should have called and congratulated uh, Chief Numbu. For Food Kaya, they even said, Joe, pick up that phone now and call and congratulate Numbu. As the president elect of the where well, the most populous uh, black nation or not, the biggest economy in Africa, the biggest blah 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 blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, isn't that the validation they are talking about? They said for Tifnumbu, I mean for Obi to call Tifnumbu drug dealer and bringing up a case or to disqualify him and jail him for drug dealing. That is to embarrass Nigeria to start with. So Layamo traveled to America last week. His job was to go to America and solicit for our lobbyists. You know, lobbyists who are going to help them promote anti-OB and so many other negative things that they have spent money on propaganda for, promote them in America, get some level of uh, pressure and sanction in a way that by the time they start killing the obedient, harassing them and arresting them, it will be justified. America will just look the other way and all that. Validation from America. They said that uh, it was uh, Geoffrey Oyama, the foreign affairs minister of Nigeria, that was given that assignment. Hey, you have been with uh, Bokwari to so many countries. You have been the foreign affairs minister. You've met with so many ambassadors. This is your job now to help us counter disobedience and their international campaigns before they finally rubbish the entire country. Oh. Because with Tinumbu, we are not going back and we need this. So all the space that you, they believe that they have actually covered in the last 10 months, we need to shrink those spaces. We need to feed our ready partners in America and UK and everywhere to help, them, to, to help us feed those lies and propagandas into their system. Make them official as a cover for us because these guys are not going to go away. Oyama was said to have kind of rejected the offer. It's not confirmed though. Okay. Uh, APC announced the suspension of uh, Geoffrey Oyama. He didn't do anything. There was no fight. There was, you know, that man now, that gentleman that is always like, doesn't talk. He doesn't, you know what I mean? Eh? Geoffrey. But they suspended him. Why? Why are you suspending Geoffrey? The obedience came out and said, now nah, because he rejected to go to America to help them uh, blackmail Peter Obi. That is why they did said, nah, then, what are you doing with us? Go away. Well, I mean, it makes sense now. Here you get. My is propaganda is not true. But they, they suspended him. Do you know why they suspended him? Why did APC suspend Oyama? It's because of anti-party. Ah, ah, ah. Takula. Takula. Eh, the burial long. Fear God. Eh? Oyama, the one we know they contest anything. We sometimes you just be wondering which state did he, I mean, where which state uh, did he come from? He's doing antipathy. Etakulao kept very long. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They've announced that uh, he must be he's suspended, and they said no, it's because you know if he go America. So Layamo like, has been in America for a while. 
trying to plant in their propaganda here and there. Unfortunately, it was America that uh, Liamo, I think he's still in the US, yeah? Liamo, the lying old rogue, eh? It was in America when uh, Chima, I mean, uh, yeah. When uh, Chima Manda's uh, bazooka hit them, they don't do the audio of it. Listen to the to it in part. Chima Manda Adichie. You know, last time when I tried to like uh, read a letter, I tried to, I mean, I tried to, but I warned all of you before that uh, there are some of these are English and uh, words that uh, some of them I don't even know how to pronounce them and I'll just try. She did pronounce them by herself here. Yeah. Listen, you know, the letter that got to Tobokeyamo, Deli Ala Kori, mm? uh, what's the other one? For Food Kayode, as well as, uh, who else again? Bayo. Anonuga, this listen to this oh attentively. Chimamanda, bad accent in here, accent in go 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 American accent. Abi, fraud elections would be rigged because elections were always rigged. The question was how badly. Sometimes voting felt like an inconsequential gesture as predetermined winners were announced. A law passed last year, the 2022 Electoral Act, changed everything. It gave legal backing to the electronic accreditation of voters and the electronic transmission of results in a process determined by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The chair of the commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, assured Nigerians that votes would be counted in the presence of voters and recorded in a result sheet and that a photo of the signed sheet would immediately be uploaded to a secure server. When rumors circulated about the commission not keeping its word, Yakubu firmly rebutted them. Nigerians applauded him. If results were uploaded right after voting was concluded, then the ruling party, the All Progressives Congress, APC, which has been in power since 2015, would have no opportunity for manipulation. Technology would redeem Nigerian democracy. Results would no longer feature more votes than voters. Nigerians would no longer have their leaders chosen for them. Elections would finally capture the true voice of the people. And so trust and hope were born. By the evening of February 25th, 2023, that trust had dissipated. Election workers had arrived hours late or without basic election materials. There were reports of violence, of a shooting at a polling unit, and of political operatives stealing or destroying ballot boxes. Some law enforcement officers seemed to have colluded in voter intimidation. In Lagos, a policeman stood idly by as an APC spokesperson threatened members of a particular ethnic group who he believed would vote for the opposition. Most egregious of all, the Electoral Commission reneged on its assurance to Nigerians. The presidential results were not uploaded in real time. Voters, understandably suspicious, reacted. Videos from polling stations show voters shouting that results be uploaded right away. Many took cell phone photos of the result sheets. Curiously, many polling units were able to upload the results of the House and Senate elections, but not the presidential election. A relative who voted in Lagos told me, we refused to leave the polling unit until the INX staff uploaded the presidential result. The poor guy kept trying and kept getting an error message. There was no network problem. I had internet on my phone. My bank app was working. The Senate and House results were easily uploaded. So why couldn't the presidential results be uploaded on the same system? Some electoral workers in polling units claimed that they could not upload results because they didn't have a password, an excuse that voters understood to be subterfuge. By the end of the day, it had become obvious that something was terribly amiss. No one was surprised when, by the morning of the 26th, social media became flooded with evidence of irregularities. Result sheets were now slowly being uploaded on the INEC portal and could be viewed by the public. Voters compared their cell phone photos with the uploaded photos and saw alterations. Numbers crossed out and rewritten. Some originally written in black ink had been rewritten in blue, some blunderingly whited out with tipex. The election had been not only rigged, but done in such a shoddy, shabby manner that it insulted the intelligence of Nigerians. Nigerian democracy had long been a two-party structure, power alternating between the APC and the People's Democratic Party, until this year, when the Labour Party, led by Peter Obi, became a third force. Obi was different. He seemed honest and accessible, and his vision of anti-corruption and self-sufficiency gave rise to a movement of supporters who called themselves obi Unusually large, enthusiastic crowds turned up for his rallies. 
The APC considered him an upstart who could not win because his small party lacked traditional structures. It is ironic that many images of altered result sheets showed votes overwhelmingly being transferred from the Labour Party to the APC. As vote counting began at INEC, representatives of different political parties, except for the APC, protested. The results being counted, they said, did not reflect what they had documented at the polling units. There were too many discrepancies. There is no point progressing in error, Mr. Chairman. We are racing to nowhere, one party spokesperson said to Yakubu. Let us get it right before we proceed with the collation. But the INEC chair, opaque-faced and lordly, refused. The counting continued swiftly until, at 4.10 a.m. on March 1st, the ruling party's candidate, Bola Tinubu, was announced as president-elect. A subterranean silence reigned across the country. Few people celebrated. Many Nigerians were in shock. Why, my young cousin asked me, did INEC not do what it said it would do? It seemed truly perplexing that, in the context of a closely contested election in a low-trust society, the Electoral Commission would ignore so many glaring red flags in its rush to announce a winner. It had the power to pause vote counting, to investigate irregularities, as it would do in the governorship elections two weeks later. Rage is brewing, especially among young people. The discontent, the despair, the tension in the air have not been this palpable in years. How surprising then to see the U.S. State Department congratulate Tinubu on March 1st. We understand that many Nigerians and some of the parties have expressed frustration about the manner in which the process was conducted and the shortcomings of technical elements that were used for the first time in a presidential election cycle, the spokesperson said. And yet the process was described as a competitive election that represents a new period for Nigerian politics and democracy. American intelligence surely cannot be so inept. A little homework, and they would know what is manifestly obvious to me and so many others. The process was imperiled not by technical shortcomings, but by deliberate manipulation. An editorial in the Washington Post echoed the State Department in intent, if not in affect. In an oddly infantilizing tone, as though intended to mollify the simple-minded, we are told that officials have asserted that technical glitches, not sabotage, were the issue, that much good came from the Nigerian elections, which are worth celebrating because, among other things, no one has blocked highways, as happened in Brazil after Jair Bolsonaro lost his re-election bid. We are also told that it is encouraging, first, that the losing candidates are pursuing their claims through the courts, though any casual observer of Nigerian politics would know that courts are the usual recourse after any election. The editorial has the imaginative poverty so characteristic of international coverage of African issues, no reading of the country's mood, no nuance or texture. But its intellectual laziness, unusual in such a rigorous newspaper, is astonishing. Since when does a respected paper unequivocally ascribe to benign malfunction something that may very well be malignant, just because government officials say so? There is a kind of cordial condescension in both the State Department's and the Washington Post's responses to the election that the bar for what is acceptable has been so lowered can only be read as contempt. I hope, President Biden, that you do not personally share this cordial condescension. You have spoken of the importance of a global community for democracy and the need to stand up for justice and the rule of law. A global community for democracy cannot thrive in the face of apathy from its most powerful member. Why would the United States, which prioritizes the rule of law, endorse a president-elect who has emerged from an unlawful process. Compromised is a ubiquitous word in Nigeria's political landscape. It is used to mean bribed, but also corrupted more generally. They have been compromised, Nigerians will say, to explain so much that is wrong, from infrastructure failures to unpaid pensions. Many believe that the INEC chair has been compromised, but there is no evidence of the astronomical US dollar amounts he is rumored to have received from the president-elect. The extremely wealthy Tinubu is himself known to be an enthusiastic participant in the art of compromising. Some Nigerians call him a drug baron because in 1993, he forfeited to the United States government $460,000 of his income that a Chicago court determined to be proceeds from heroin trafficking. Tinubu has strongly denied all charges of corruption. I hope it will not surprise you, President Biden, if I argue that the American response to the Nigerian election also bears the faint taint of that word, compromised, because it is so removed from the actual situation in Nigeria as to be disingenuous. Has the United States once again decided that what matters in Africa is not democracy, but stability? 
Perhaps you could tell British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who quickly congratulated Tinubu, that an illegitimate government in a country full of frustrated young people does not pretend stability. Or is it about that ever-effulgent nemesis China, as so much of US foreign policy now invariably seems to be? The battle for influence in Africa will not be won by supporting the same undemocratic processes for which China is criticized. This Nigerian election was supposed to be different, and the U.S. response cannot, must not, be business as usual. The Nigerian youth, long politically quiescent, have awoken. About 70% of Nigerians are under 30, and many voted for the first time in this election. Nigerian politicians exhibit a stupefying ability to tell barefaced lies, so to participate in political life has long required a suspension of conscience. But young people have had enough. They want transparency and truth. They want basic necessities, minimal corruption, competent political leaders, and an environment that can foster their generation's potential. This election is also about the continent. Nigeria is a symbolic crucible of Africa's future, and a transparent election will rouse millions of other young Africans who are watching and who long, too, for the substance and not the hollow form of democracy. <laughs> Thank you. How many of you would believe that that wasn't Chimamanda talking? It was a AI generated voice. How many of you would believe that? I know some of you do know. Some of some people are already saying, "No, it's AI generated." Uh -huh. Now, computer generated the voice. What they did, uh -huh, what they called the AI. What they did was that uh, they would go and pick. Chimamanda, where Chimamanda was giving speech, they will pick and record that voice and then uh, shoot it inside the AI. Now, you see this uh, letter that he, or, she already wrote, eh? that's in public. You also feed it into the AI. So the AI will be reading the letter with the voice that you shoot into it. <laughs> Sorry, I told you that um, come and see the accent. Come and see the voice. Um, I love the accent. And a lot of you actually possibly just listen to the accent. And I started seeing people say, almost um, see voice. Um, you they see voice. Eh? You feel see voice. Um, I, said, I, just, I was reading the comments. Some of you are saying, um, I almost see voice. See voice. See, um, see this one. Oh. So it's actually a computer generated their uh, voice. So some of you are thinking when people said that uh, Peter Obi's thing, a phone call with uh, Oyedepo was fake. You just couldn't like, no, nah, I, I know the voice of Oyedepo. I know the voice of Obi. I can, I've shake it. I went to uh, Just say the one you know. Just say that, that one you know. If you see another one, sometimes just relax. Relax. Okay? Because in the process, eh, you get to know what they are talking about. And it may just be what, yeah, you do know something. You, mean, you know, I don't know everything, you know, and I don't claim to myself. But a lot of you were listening to that voice with rapt attention. Only a few people realized that some pronunciations, if it was a human, if it was Chimamanda herself, she won't call Einek, Hinek. So you get. And some few other things I observed too. And you will know that, no, 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 this is not a machine. I'm just saying. So there are many people who can do the same, okay? But can we at least do something before we proceed? If you are watching on YouTube, we are over 3,000 of us on YouTube as we speak, okay? Now, if you haven't uh, paid your offering, your offering is to like the broadcast. Just leave the chat room. You need to close the chat and then go under the video itself and just like. And uh, if you have, if this is your first time, second time, even third time, a few times as well, and you've actually not subscribed onto my Ego's Diary Political, come on, what are you waiting for? Eh? You've been here a few times, but you just don't feel like you should subscribe. Yeah, people subscribe and they take it away again when I say something they don't like. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, Subscribe first before you have something to take back. So that you can tell me. My, I thought you are somebody I can, I follow you because I thought you are somebody I can trust with uh, this and that. Then I will say something you don't like. I will just take away your subscription. Then you come back later. But 
do it first, okay? Now we have uh, over 800 of us who have listened to that. So if you have done it, don't do it again. Because if you go back there and click, you, you remove your offering. Oh. Come like say, eh? You know those people that will be, that, that will act as uh, ushers in uh, churches, eh? And then uh, they will just be like, first they will pretend to be putting their own uh, money in after they have collected money from everybody. Then they will put their hand in the pockets, eh? And they will dip the hand in the in the jar, eh? and they will take some extra. He said, I'm just taking change. You know, something like, I uh, just take 400 Naira. He said, ah, 400 Naira, yeah, I, I put 500 there. I just want to, I want to pay 100, 100 Naira. Sure, you know those people, so don't be like them. Once you have already dropped the offering, don't worry, just continue listening. Because the next stage of our conversation right now has to do with uh, Nigeria generally. You see, this is far. Maybe it's not even our far. Sure, you get. But the way he dressed and what he has, what uh, he's saying, I'll speak on that uh, now before I go to the next one. Right? Northern Nigeria. That's our own music. You see me, the matter of making Christa normal music is our own. A man's a gash out in the second one. I'm going to come and come as Allah. Come a dunia go back. It's an attire. The suit. Dick Tare, your two rain and the catches in your Abu. But we don't want to be even if you don't live over the Akawa. Come on, get tired. The suit. I come on me. Muslim to Muslim aid the care that they say what kill check about has a guy. It up a donor Muslim. Then you take a case. She's a fire tire. Muslim. They are come at a shaker. Zabu musike musulmi da mati maki Krista normal suke zaben mu amma yanzu gashi abin da suka nuna mana kuma sun kawo matsala kuma duniya gabaki dai tana tare da su duk tarayyar turai nan da kace sun yi wani abu ba wai dan an wa fi dipa ne ba dan labo party da aka yi wa kuma muka tayar da su akan wani mai musulmi to musulmi dai da ka yadda da isaya wakil cheka ba har sai kai idan fa da wani musulmin dan ya taimake shi safaya taya Muslimi daya kamata a ce ishe ka a wannan dai duniyar ta yanzu amma inda hada kanmu muka yi muka ce mu samu strong muslimi ya zabu wani kirista ko wane ne mu tafi aka shi muslimin yana da ajanda ma musulunci ya ma san me musulunci ya san ma me me musulunci yake bukata menene matsalan mu me matsalan mu Say Munjawa Kamu, Dunia Gabaki de Tazu, Takalim, Say Munjawa Kamu Rabba Kasar, Al Hali Muka Eniba Mushiriaba, Usani Nigeria and Kasa Ukuchi, Kokun to Kokun So, Kasa Yaraba, Kasa in Yamare, Ariwa, to Ariwa and Zuana Abin Yaraba, Yaza Ariwa Ma, Muntabata Christo, Ariwa Namu Bariba. According to that Sheikh Jekomo, I'll call him Sheikh Jekomo. Jekomo is let them know. Jekomo. According to Sheikh Jekomo, the people of northern Nigeria that are promoting this Muslim Muslim ticket to suppress others, they are even more divided because they are more confused. The message they are sending to the world is that uh, when you have one Muslim, it's not enough. You need two before you can say the Muslims are in charge. Abi, hang on. I said that battery need uh, some switching. If you haven't paid the offering, pay it now. I'm coming back. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, in a moment, Prince Gentleman said this. Prince Gentleman said this studio. See. Yeah, my people are the hello. This is not Prince Gentleman again. Ah, uh, Nigeria on a good morning. On a good morning. On a good morning. Obedient with a greet on our on our well done. I no say we no go town town on a on a dumb Nigeria on a try a lock. On a seven a try on a lock. I don't be so. On a don't see him now. Yeah. The baby Jebu on a go play. I don't see how he take end. When the man the canoe they tell on a before on a chuck on a head, say on a PVC they use less. On a T say man the can now wear it like a crazy, the crazy abi. Uh huh, I don't see him now. On top of on a PVC again. 
They know they only beat on on top or they even kill on and put on top. And I see them. So that's why Biafra, we don't make up our mind now. They, they say, we don't go full on and do this on a gang gambling. I understand. This on a gambling where henchmen, where henchmen they do for now. I don't know, you see Nigeria, on a matter the tired person. Oh, on a tise, uh, henchmen, eh, terrorists where they for us or rock. On a tise, they go conduct, uh, on a, ask themselves, this beaver is one of the talk. Ask them, they pronounce beaver. They say na papers. Beavers, na papers, na they call them papers. Yeah, nine uh, henchmen, henchmen, uh, uh, ginger weed, they call uh, beavers, not papers. So, how it is uh, that kind of person go conduct an election for now? The election go there credible. Yeah, you know, say that crazy with that now. On a go carry on ahead, go find where on a go shook on ahead, finish now to go use. Uh, Go call henchmen, make a where they control cow. You see them? You know, say the way they tell they take stick, they control cow, they just say the same thing with human being. That's why they need to understand on a democracy. Now, if they talk on a democracy, now it will be the demonstration of grace to them. You understand? Now, the thing now, you see, we don't know the way we go tell on now. We IPOB, we don't see. If you bend down, you go see. They say if you bend down, you go see Uganda. If you bend down, you go see uh, Morovia. You understand me? We don't bend down, te -te. we don't see Nigeria. Nyash. Since Nigeria is independent, Nigeria Nyash don't blow. Breeze don't blow Nigeria, Nyash. it don't open. We don't see say, Nigeria no go anywhere. With this kind of uh, henchman mentality, eh? henchman mentality in governance, you understand? A henchman, I ain't on a uh, unitary government into federal government. Did they hear me so? Ask them to define and ask them to implement. Today, I want to declare without equivocation. Today I want to declare without equivocation. Today I want to. Thank you, Prince Jejeman. You made me laugh, and I got a teary laugh uh, tonight. I was actually laughing sitting down here, like oh my. I haven't seen that video. Honestly, he sent that to me, and he said, "My I have a video for you." I actually thought he was going to be singing, but that was cracking, like really, really cracking, even though the message is not lost on us. I hope the message is not lost on you. You got the message. He says, continue, keep fighting, but it's just a surprise that you could believe that. Hmm? Who said failure to participate in politics, eh? or should I say consequences of uh, not participating in politics, means that uh, you will be led by your inferior okay or maybe not that's not the right one let's use another one they came for the socialist i didn't talk because i'm not a socialist abby they came for the jews oh i'm not jew so you see eh? they came for the shiite and they almost oh, they don't come for the doctors in nigeria see the people who are now making laws that uh because all of the doctors in nigeria eh they are leaving Nigeria. A lot of them, medical students, they just get education. And they leave Nigeria for the greener pasture. So Nigeria is losing for training medical students. But they are not working for Nigeria. They are working abroad. So they are now trying to make a law. That law means if you go to medical school in Nigeria, seven years, and then you graduate, you would have to like wait for another five years before you can be given your certificate of your license to practice as a doctor. And if you don't have that, I believe, you can't even go abroad and work. So that is the solution to stop uh, the abroad taking Nigeria doctors that sometimes go on strike. Can you believe that doctors in Nigeria 
Some of them are being hold years of unpaid salary, gratuities. Retire, you know, is see those making the loss. Notice that the, the, there is heavy decline on medical uh, uh, brain drain from 24,000 to now, as I speak, we have less than 10,000 doctors in Nigeria. So that is alarming. So I now thought to myself that, okay, let us look at our laws, what is happening. I noticed that, look, the, 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 the vacuum is that immediately after uh, husbandship, you know, we notice that most doctors, because of greener pastures, there is a capital flight from Nigeria abroad to UK, um, America, and all that. Now, um, government has invested so much money in training, in training these medical doctors. So, if you uh, realize, if they can now take advantage of our situation, okay, and now open their doors, because just recently, in 2020, UK opened a healthcare and a visa to people. They were all going to UK and US too, and Canada. So, what should we do? Should we follow our arms? So now, I now said, okay, maybe to give back to the society, that is to our people. After training you, yes, we are not saying you cannot go abroad to make your money. But if we, if government has subsidized your tuition, okay, I mean, to, to the tune of uh, 40 to uh, 150,000, the least we can get from you is that after your husbandship, before you are given full license, before you are given full license, it's a, for, yes, before you are given full license, at least you can give back to the society within a period of five years. So after five years, you are free to go. At least you've given back to the society. <laughs> ah, God, why do you brought me to this Nigeria? What? What are we do today? Ah, today, oh, oh, I will never my voice in space. Oh, yeah, oh, what I do? Ah, you are ready for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the people that uh, their leaders are receiving medical care abroad. Tifnumbu is in France uh, receiving medical care so they can then go back to Nigeria, like Bukwari, and do what they have to do best. They were not talking about how to give uh, doctors in Nigeria better pay. To encourage them to stay back in Nigeria. Sure, you get give them better pay. That lawmaker that is talking there, mm -hmm. a federal lawmaker, House of uh, Representatives member, I believe, that guy goes home every month with over 18 million naira, legally and illegally, that he takes from the cover of Nigeria. And there are 360 of them in that Abuja. He's one of them. A lot of them, their families don't live in Nigeria since they became uh, elected officials. Their families are in that America. They are in UK. They are everywhere. Their children are schooling abroad. But the solution is to hold those uh, graduates so that they can serve the, serve the people. And after five years, they can leave. That's how smart he is. Not how to kind of make their working environment more conducive, right? That uh, nothing they are offering them abroad will be attractive to what Nigeria is actually giving to them to encourage them to stay, and more and more of them to even go into medical pro profession. Parents uh, in Nigeria, parents invest their money on the uh, children's education, right? Choice, different kind of uh, education, right? They invest so much with the expectation that uh, once they are graduate, they can start working and start providing for themselves as well as their parents. But with politicians in Nigeria, it is just to make your life even worse, not to, make the, not to even make it better in any way, yeah? Well, some people are already saying, yes, now, yes. What kind of nonsense? And some of you are so bonu that uh, that reflects the kind of people leading you. It is so unfortunate, too. But again, who is expecting anything real? Or oh, fortunate about Nigeria.
except the deluded ones that elect criminals and they are expecting a miracle from thieves, rogues, to actually run a better country. Look, we're going for me. Go and call your mommy for me. You. Jay! 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 Help us! Help us! There is God! There is God! 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 God should descend today. God will descend here. Nigerian women will not cry in vain. Nigerian women will not cry in vain. This thing will end today. My sisters, if my child, if your child lost, will you stay and keep quiet? Will you people stay and keep quiet? The president now is calling you, come, I want to help you. You don't want to appear. Will you get angry? No. Now the first lady is calling you, come, I want to help you. Come to find your, your child, your missing child. Will you keep quiet? No. Child. Child. There is God. There is God. The blood we are sharing, there is God. 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 We have got the opportunity to serve again for additional four years. And Nigerians will know the difference. Eighty children kidnapped in a local government in Zamfara, and it's like nothing. Ten school children were kidnapped in Kaduna by terrorists a few days back. It is like nothing. I was expecting those who were translating or, yeah, those who were translating the, the fake phone call of Obi to do a voice note eh, about these children that the bandits have kidnapped again. Do voice note in Ausa for a full day and share the news all over northern Nigeria and say, see you. What a miracle walking God. What a miracle walking God. Is a aluva at Omega. What a miracle, walking God. Chief Numbu has not been sworn in. The reward of bringing in or extending the days of the terrorists in Nigeria have already started yielding results. Can they go to town with that? Can you, who can sing that in Ausa? It's a miracle, walking God. They have gone mute. 90 souls, children, Something that would throw the entire country into a serious pandemonium. APC, Egbeke Egbeke came in. Eh? They legalized terrorism. They turned it into an industry. When uh, they said they were changing Naira, one of uh, their reasons for changing Naira was that uh, it's going to destroy all of the ransom money that the, the terrorists in uh, northern Nigeria have collected, amassed. But the man that brought the terrorists to Nigeria, Hel Rufaya of Kaduna, the Kaduna Little Finger, the man that publicly confessed that he went, he traveled to all of the West African uh, countries, Telling the Fulani terrorists to come back to Nigeria, their brother is in power now. The video is out there. Don't pretend that you are hearing that for the first time. The video is out there. He publicly said that on channels television repeatedly. The man that brought the terrorists was also the man who took a Mephioli to court because they wanted the Naira, the old Naira, to remain in circulation to the end of the year until Boku, I mean, Tifnumbu comes in. And some people were saying that, uh, what then happened to the ones that are in the hands of the terrorists? 
it doesn't matter. Everybody can spend their money. In fact, if terrorists have the money and they have nowhere to change them, they should bring them to Kaduna. The Kaduna little finger lost 10 children, school children. You see the ones they kidnapped in, uh, in uh, Zamfara. Latvia, you know? Abi Safi, Abi Safi, Safi, local government. Like Safi, ni Abi Safi, Abi Safi, Sha, ni Zamfara. Safi, eh? They rounded school children. I mean, they rounded the girls. I mean, the the uh, what do you call it? These uh, children who are like uh, between the ages of uh, twelve and seventeen. They rounded them up on the farm. Where they said the children went to pick uh, firewood and all of that. Breaking news, so oh, 80 children. Omo. Just about the people just they're just moving on like it's nothing. It's just like well, it's a family business. Family business, family business, family business. Family business. Then kidnap my own family member. Ijebu Ogere to Ibadan. Eh? Now 3.5 million. We take a collect and back. Ijebu. She Ijebu Sumozan Fara. Family problem. Family problem. Good enough. They are back. They are, they, are, they are like, they are back like they have never left. During their campaigns and election and the rest of that, terrorism suddenly just died down. The terrorists, they said the terrorists were voting. So now that they have uh, got, they have received an extension, eh, the jihadist Republic of Nigeria, oh yeah, let the jihadists continue like we never left. They were celebrating, you know, we killed 48. They killed 48 terrorists, they said, oh, yesterday, breaking news, so. Oh. Only for the terrorists to do their own breaking news today. Kidnapped 80 children. Now, they will never see all of them. You know that. They will be paid huge amount of money, ransom. The terrorists will be paid hugely. And the children, right? They will never be found, all of them. Some of them are going to be turned to sex slaves by these terrorists. So if after two years or three years... That these uh, little little girls that they kidnapped, they've turned them into mothers. Now they have one, one. I mean, they have uh, two kids, three kids for terrorists in the forest, and he can't feed them anymore. He will now bring them to public and say he has surrendered, he has repented, and they will just say, "Yeah, sit down there, pick up your uniform, wear your wife." They will be calling a victim, a kidnapped victim, that terrorists have been raping and raping and raping, they will be calling, calling them family. Terrorists who kidnap school children, oh, oh dear. Nigeria, Nigeria, I don't even know how to describe it to you. A lot of you can't even imagine this because you are not from the North. Okay, oh, just sit down once and think about, uh, you know, look at your children and be like, uh, if somebody touches your children, take them away from you, abuse them sexually and, other, and others, right? And then they put them in family way. Then at the end of the day, they walk back to town after three, four years. And then they say, they are now a family. You are seeing your child on national television. They say the repentant terrorists and their family. That's your daughter there on TV. We just say it's a family affair. A lot is going on. And this whole kidnapping is not even limited to Northern Nigeria anymore. They are coming down south to kidnap school children. But they are not kidnapping them like they are doing now. A lot of children are missing. Yeah, in Yoruba land, though, all over southern Nigeria, children are missing. Right? And their parents are thinking they have been kidnapped by a ritualist. Uh, this, all of that. All of this madness are going on in Nigeria because it's like a dark cloud over the country. It's been like that since 2015. And it seems that it's going to be like that for a very long time. Again, so if they say Nigeria is not for you, how many times would they tell you before you know that Nigeria is not for you? Ah! Now they never leave you. They have left you behind. Photo. Not be juju be that. I'm sorry, you. Oh, sorry, you. Oh. May God not allow them to kill you. 70 years old, man. Oh. I am mumu I too much. You be mumu. You think they are wise? I'm a mumu. Anyway, we hope that, uh, you know, they will find uh, the children and everybody who is uh, under the captivity of uh, the terrorists. They are not going anywhere. They're going to escalate the obedience. You are going to be waking up every day with so many things that will be looking like surprises. They want to sap you. They want to drain you. They want to do everything. 
or since you have been able to withstand them for months now, this may be your toughest uh, of them all. So they said that uh, Obi is going nowhere. Don't go anywhere. As for me, Mayegu, mm, you can always join me at the temple whenever the uh, update uh, pops up. At the end of the day, you can piece all this story together and then be so no start, no, no, kind of uh, optimistic what is going to be the end result. A lot of people are still wondering, why is APC dissipating so much energy in trying to destroy Labour Party even after elections? Like, what is there go, 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 going on? Eh? Obi is not the only person in court. Atiku is in court. Eh? Kwakwanso is in court. Why Obi and his labor? Is there something they are not telling us? Eh? Of course, there is more to what you are saying. So I'm thinking I should take calls. I should take a rest tonight. And I can take calls some other time. I'm just thinking in between. To make it a little bit more kind of fun, uh, let's uh, patch calls tonight. And let's have an early, early finish. Okay? So thank you so much for joining me. I would have loved to see all your reactions. But don't worry. There will be another time. And we can all react as usual. But the ones I have shared, the ones you know, and the rest of those you are going to, going to probably still see, mm -hmm. the ideal thing is, for you to be able to differentiate between their propaganda. It is the end goal and the end uh, result of uh, their propaganda that we know is going to be more disastrous, divisive, and even more violent. That's why we want to make sure that uh, when they are popping up all of this whole thing, before they now turn around and start blaming others, you should be aware and don't try uh, to justify them and call it uh, a strategy. There's no strategy like that. Sabotaging your opposition publicly and openly. That's actually so much like uh, illegal, or if you call it strategy. Anyway, we'll see where that takes everyone, okay? Thank you for spending your evening with me again. Don't leave without uh, dropping your offering. Like the broadcast, share it, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I will see you some other time. Hmm? Good night.